Hello everybody, we are live. I'm back after a very long break for a laser coaching session uh, for the Powerful Men's Group. I did a whole bunch of these in 2016 and in 2017 and we've had, God, I don't even know how long, maybe a year break, uh, but we're back. And I'm joined today by someone who was supposed to be on the last time around I was doing these, but we couldn't get the technology to work. But we're back with different technology, um, but with the same people. Uh, and I'm joined today by Dusty Bryan, someone in our group. Hi, Dusty. The man, the myth, and the myth, legend. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, so tell us a little bit about where you're from. Uh, you mean like where I'm actually from? Yeah. Okay. Um I'm from Tennessee in the U.S. I go to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, and I've lived in this area my whole life. Fantastic. Yeah, you can tell from your accent you're not from the U.K. or from Europe. Yeah. So um, I know you sent me a little message. I think it's pretty much the same as what you wanted to coach on, on last year. Um, but you said you wanted coaching on... Uh, your belief around your inability to connect with women, but I'd like to hear that in your own words. What well, um, you know, I took the Ars Amorata course and I read the Alabaster Girl, and I've really been going out and pushing myself. Um, I, I really got over my anxiety. I used to have a lot of beliefs about my anxiety keeping me from approaching women, but I got to a point where I'm really comfortable just talking to women now. And it's been that way for a few months and I've been getting more first dates, but it's like the dates never um, lead to more dates or anything else. And I kind of, you know, I, I, I uh, <clears throat> struggle with a lot of beliefs about, man, what if that's my ceiling? You know, like what if I'm, what if I just don't connect with women, you know? Because I've been because I've been stuck in this for a while, you know. I get first dates, but that's pretty much it. Now, is it all right if I ask you a question that might sound like a silly question? Okay. Is that okay? Um, I guess so. But you know, obviously, I would like to see you know, more progress in that area. Sure. Sure. So it's, it's related to that, but it, it might, it might sound a, a, a little bit of an obvious or a silly question. And, and the question is, um, why is it important for you to have more success with women? I mean, there's also, you know, there's different reasons, you know, obviously, I have a desire to connect with women, but then there's also kind of egoic reasons. Um, like I want to know that I have what it takes to, you know, be desired by women and stuff. I actually went on a date with a girl last night and, um, I didn't really like her, you know, I didn't feel like we got along or anything, but I was trying to go for a, a second date. Anyway, just to see, you know, kind of where she was at and she's gone radio silent and that kind of bothered me. So, yeah, it's kind of egoic in some ways, but also I do have a desire to connect with women, you know. So, so let's see, let's say um, you did connect with women yeah. and, and let's say, you know, you started to get second dates and third dates and you were desired by women you know let's fulfill some of these egoic desires that you have you know just imagine right like yeah. imagine that could happen what do you think would happen what do you think would change in you um i think i would feel a little bit more confident like uh my ego would shut up a little bit <laughs> I mean, at least in the short term. Is there anything else that you think would happen if you 
got those fulfilled like if if you got women to to desire you and want to be with you you'd feel more confident you'd have you'd feel better in yourself is there anything else or or is that it um i think it would be you know um it would give me more experience you know in relating to women because you know it would get me deeper into the script so to speak you know the more you talk to somebody um the more they kind of show their true colors and you and you kind of learn how to respond you know what i mean like just like it's like you know getting deeper in getting deeper into the dynamic and starting to figure more of it out so let's kind of what's the end goal here right is the end goal to be like you've really f- cracked the code of women like what what would be the the outcome that you'd look for the kind of ultimate outcome I would like to be able to have, you know, positive relationships with women, you know, because right now I kind of feel like I'm distant from women. Like they kind of keep me at arm's length, you know, and if I go, like, like I said, you know, I never really get past the uh, first day. I, I don't really have any close female friends. That's something that's kind of bothered me a lot. And just, again, this might not sound relevant, but how well do you connect with men? Like, do you have really good, strong, positive friendships and connections with other men? Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. I feel like I have a really strong rapport with guys. Like, I just walk into a situation and I make guys laugh and they... You know, they like me at least, you know, in a superficial way. They think, hey, Dusty's a funny guy. You know, he's a fun guy to hang out with, you know. And and how's your relationship to yourself, would you say? <laughs> um, like, could you elaborate? Like, I don't really know how to answer the question. Well, let me be blunt. Do you do you like yourself? Sometimes, but a lot of times I'm really uh, hard on myself. Does it look like to you, if you had more success with women, that? it would mean you wouldn't need to be so hard on yourself. Yeah, that's kind of the way I feel, yeah. So, you know, I might be might be off base here, but is it possible that, you know, this success that you're looking for from, from women or, or with women, it's actually because you want to just feel better about yourself and it's just as much about your connection and relationship to yourself as it is your connection and relationship to women yeah I think so and realizing that does that does anything bubble up for you now when you realize that's what's going on? Uh, I guess I don't need like women's approval or whatever after all. And it wouldn't necessarily fix um, my whole issue because I'm hard on myself in any area of my life where I feel like a failure, you know, like, you know, there's a lot of areas in my life that I'm pretty confident, like, but, um, you know, you do have those moments where you don't 
live up to your own expectations and it's like um you, you know you start kicking yourself i'm i'm a dj on the radio for my university's radio station and my uh the the manager of the station came in a few weeks ago and he was telling me that I was doing a great job. He said I was sounding a lot more confident on the air. And not 10 minutes after he came in and said that, I made a minor screw up on the air. And I thought, damn it, you're an idiot. And then it kind of got in my head. And for the rest of the shift, I was kind of making little minor, minor mental errors. Like me being hard on myself made me perform worse, actually, looking back on it. So is it possible that you being so tough on yourself is exactly what's hampering your connection with women? Definitely, yeah. And and how would you feel if you met a woman and she wanted to she wanted you to like her just so that she could feel better about herself? Can I be can I be honest? Yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't mind if, if I found her physically attractive. But mm. I mean, but most of the time if you know, if I wasn't in such kind of um scarcity, yeah, I think that would bother me definitely. Mm. It's not it's not the most attractive quality, is it? No. <laughs> So does it does it now do you, do you see now like from a different point of view what's been going on and why you've been struggling so much with women Yeah I can I can see it now And and are you open to the possibility that if you stop being so hard on yourself not only would things ease up with regards to women but they'd ease up with your with your DJ role. They'd probably ease up with your school. They'd yeah. probably ease up in a lot of areas of life. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how should I react when I start having these thoughts that come into my mind? Is there anyone that you really love in your life, Dusty? Um, my mom, uh, my brother, my, my whole family, really. And, and when... Let's imagine someone in your family, whether let's say your brother, if your brother started telling you he was feeling really down and he was being really hard on yourself, how would you react to him? If he said what, what was the, if he said what? He was feeling really down and you know and you saw him being hard on himself and if you were coming from a really loving place, how would you react to your brother? Um, I would probably try to cheer him up and like make a lot of it because that's the way we are, you know. That's the way he that's the way he does me when I'm down. And sometimes he tells me to shut the fuck up. So do you see it's possible that you can make light yeah. when you've messed up? Yeah. Like, it doesn't need to be a big, heavy story. Oh, I was doing well. My boss came in and said I was doing a good job, and then I messed up. Like, that could be a funny story, right? You could turn <laughs> that into... You can imagine a stand-up telling a joke about that, right? 
It's like, yeah. you know, why is it that any time someone tells me I'm doing well, that's when I it's jinxed me to to then do badly. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's that is actually pretty funny now that you say it like that. And you could turn that in a joke. You could say, "Oh, so now I wear a T-shirt telling everyone, don't give me any pro- any praise." Because every time someone does, it jinxes me, right? But you're laughing about it. You're, you're joking. You're not taking it seriously. Yeah. Right, we've got a few people watching. I'd love it if anyone watching this, please let us know. Can you relate to what Dusty said? You know, when things don't quite go according to plan, do you guys also have moments when you're hard on yourself? Are you tough on yourself? Do you f- sometimes say to yourself, oh, you idiot, why did you do that? I'd love to hear from you as well. And I'm curious, Dusty, does it, do you think that other people do the same thing that you do? Or does it look like kind of this is really personal to you? Do what? Uh, do, do you say do other people? Do, uh, like you, do you think other people are hard on themselves like you're hard on yourself? Definitely. And also, I've been thinking, too, um, I think part of my problem is um, I was a, you know, are, do you know, are were you, a, do you have any brothers or sisters, Ankush? Yes. Are you the youngest or the oldest or the middle? Or? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Um, I was the baby of my family, and I think when you're the baby, you know, like, People that, you know, your family members, your older siblings, everyone. Um, it's like, it's like they patronize you. They kind of, you know, you're, you're always kind of the baby. You never kind of lose that. Um, they never lose that perception of you. So people kind of patronize you. You know what I mean? And it's like, I have a chip on my shoulder. Like I need to. I need to show everyone that I'm competent. I'm not, you know, the baby. I'm not the uh, the the youngest one where we have no expectations for him because he's just the baby. Gucci, you know, Gucci, Gucci, goo. I'm gonna uh, get your cheek. <laughs> You know that's got nothing to do with you being the baby of the family. Huh? Why do you say that? Because you're not a child anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There there are other people in this group who are the youngest of they've got older siblings. Yeah. And we really have a choice in how we show up. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely see that, uh, you know, I can choose how I'm going to respond to that, but I definitely do feel like, um, there's that, you know, there's that kind of perception, you know, like I still feel like even though, you know, I like I've, I've gone farther in education, you know, than anyone in my family thus far. I still feel kind of like there's this like they treat me like I'm incompetent in a lot of things, you know what I mean? And it bothers me. It probably shouldn't. But it does. I get that. You know, I, um, well, I'll just say this. So Nathan's commenting, he said, uh, about feeling hard on himself or tough. He said he has, he's had a succession of things that have happened in a day that have wound him up to the point where he's literally comical and he can laugh at it. And then you end up laughing at yourself for how wound up you even got in the first place. Right. So thank, thank you, Nathan, for, for sharing that. And 
you know, it's it's useful to see how this isn't just you, Dusty. It's it's everyone. Yeah. Now, with with regards to you know getting you getting frustrated at your family, that's how you feel, right? Yeah. But they're doing the best that they can, right? Do you, think, yeah. do you think they wake up and think, we want to really bother Dusty, we want to upset him? <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. Right. <laughs> Have you got any nephews or nieces or any little kids in your family? I have a niece, but uh, my sister is 10 years older than me, mm. and she had a child when she was 20. So I've got a niece who is uh, 17 now. She's 10 years younger than me. So so when you let's, – let's go back 10 years. When your niece was, say, 7 years old. Yeah. If she said to you, Uncle Dusty, you know, you should be doing this or you should be doing that, did you take it personally? No. Why not? Well, honestly, when she was real little, like, she was kind of my biggest cheerleader, mm. you know. Like, she kind of looked up to me because I was the older kid to her, you know. But but even if she did, if she, if she like, fell over, like, I hate you, Uncle Dusty, would you take it seriously? You'd be like, I know. It's all right. Yeah. I wouldn't take it seriously, no. Right. So it's funny, isn't it, how with certain people we we can take what they say seriously and with other people we just we just let it go. Yeah. See you do that already and you've got that power to do it. And you can do it with your family too. Yeah. No matter what they say, you can just laugh that off as well and say, Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. It's really freeing when you see that nobody has the capability to make you feel anything. Yeah. Because if they can make you feel something, that's when you're going to go around trying to change the world or control the world. Right? And, and Tommy's just commented, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty hard on myself also. I have a high opinion of my capabilities, but I try to control everything in my life. My work, my income, my family, my fitness. I want it all to be the best that, it, that I can be, and it's hard for me to accept that I'm also imperfect at times, and some things will fall apart. But sometimes I'll have a really beautiful moment of quiet and realize that's okay too. Awesome. Right, We all do this when it looks like someone else can make us feel something or a job can make us feel something or women can make us feel something. Then we try and control it, right? But if you see that they can't, then the need for control, does that make sense anymore? No. He's smiling. Tell me what's coming up for you. I was just thinking of how I was just thinking of how stupid it is, you know, to try to control other people because usually it just makes the situation worse. Mm. All right. How does it work when people try and control you? How does that tend to work out? Hours in, I'm usually yeah. Mm. You see, this can be a turning point for you, Dusty. Like literally, yeah. this moment can be a turning point for the rest of your life. Yep. 
there'll probably still be moments where I get lost in my superstitious thoughts. You know, right. me too. So yeah. I bet Tommy and Nathan and everyone else watching does too. When we're not saying that, or I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that you won't get lost. We all do. That's human nature. Yeah. But basically what I'm saying is you're okay. Yeah. I kind of had a funny story. Um, it it, it kind of deals with this, you know, the way, you know, the way we think of things. Um, I was at a wedding not too long ago, and I think I, I, think I talked about this in the group. Um, I was at a wedding, and this – and. This woman was like sitting there looking at me and I, and I noticed and I thought she was looking at me, but I didn't say anything. And I got up to go to the bar to get another drink. And she came up and started tapping me on the shoulder and then she started talking to me. She introduced herself. And she was like, where do I know you from? And I, I explained to her the context we, where we knew each other from because – She's in the chiropractor's office. I go to a lot of the times when I'm there. I was at my chiropractor's wedding. And we've seen each other there and met each other. But she kept insisting, um, no, no, we've met each other somewhere else. And I said, no, we were at the office. You know, that's where we met. And then I sort of got in my head, you know, maybe she's interested in me. And they were just now starting to dance out on the dance floor. And I said, hey, come dance with me. And you should have seen her. She made like a, her eyes got really big and she turned and bolted. She didn't even answer the question. She just, her eyes got really big and she just turned and ran. And at the moment it was funny, but then I started thinking about it later and it really started bothering me. I was thinking, oh, Shit, I'm such a loser that women get creeped out by me asking them to dance. You know, they make, they look at me like I'm Michael Myers or something. <laughs> you know what, Dusty? I think you had a bit of a realization at the start of this call, right? Yeah. Which is you're really tough on yourself. Yeah. And you're looking to women to make you feel good. Yeah. That projects. Have you ever been to like buy a car? And even before the car salesman walks over to you, you can tell. You can tell when the guy's walking over to you or any anything. If you're going to buy something, you can tell when someone's really salesy. Yeah. You can tell when someone's really genuine, even before they open their mouth, right? Yeah. See, women can sense that too. Yeah. But the thing is, I think I usually am pretty genuine, you know. It's not about genuine, Dusty. It's about you looking, or you said at the start, you were looking to feel more confident. You're looking to feel better. And you think that if women like you, then you'll feel better about yourself. Yeah, I see. That's what women are sensing. Yeah. When you're comfortable in yourself then it's a very different energy. It's like when you buy something off someone who's like, yeah, you know, hey, this is what I got for sale. If you want it, it's great, and I really like to help you out. And if you don't want it, there's another shop up the road, and there are other places I hope you find what you're looking for. It's a very different energy from that person compared to someone who's like, hey, come in, like, you need to buy from me, special offer today, like, and they're really trying to get you to buy off them. Even before yeah. they open their mouth, there's a different energy. Yeah, I can see that. I call it the wanting it tax. Sometimes when you want something so bad because you think it's going to make you feel better, you tend to push that thing away from you. Yeah.
You said the wanting it tax? Yeah. That's funny. Except it's a tax you can never pay off as long as you're 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 beholden to it. Like student loan debt. I like to keep these to half an hour, Dusty. So it, has that been helpful to you? Yes, it has. If, if of course, we were having a proper coaching session, we'd have a lot longer and I'd carry on going and we could go deeper. But um, I'd like to finish it here. And would you let us know how you get along in the group? Would you let keep us informed? Yes. And also, before I go... Um, do you have any suggestions on what I should read? I've read Clarity and the Michael Neal's Inside Out Revolution. Do you have any other? Yeah, so yes. there's a there's a ton of books I recommend to people, and and some of the guys in the group have read them. So the next book I would suggest you read is Somebody Should Have Told Us by Jack Pransky. Somebody Should Have Told Us by Jack Pransky. Okay, I'll look that up. All right. And let us know how you get on with it. Okay, I will. Thanks, Dusty. Thanks for taking uh, your time to talk to me.